So the theme song is again slightly remixed. And I don't think it, it, it might be my least favorite one. I thought it was five, but it might be this one. Anyway, speaking of least favorite things, this is Halloween Resurrection. It's not my least favorite entry. Well, no, it's not. But it's, it's pretty, pretty damn close. So. Now, I have a bit of a story about this one because I remember when it came out and a teenage me was so hyped for it that my parents wouldn't take me to see it. But instead, a few Christmases later, my mother got me the DVD. This is the same one she got me all those years ago. Along with this exact copy of Resident Evil. However, that same Christmas, my stepmother also got me Resident Evil. Literally, like, this exact one, like here. I reused it for my Close Encounters of the Third Kind DVD because when I bought it, I didn't see on eBay that it said disc only. But yeah, see, right here. I reused the other Resident Evil because it quit working. I guess that's the other book. So that was an awkward Christmas. And she also got me a copy of Rob Zombie's Halloween. And she was super proud. Like, yeah, I didn't mind it. She was. She was like, you can take it home too. I'm like, awkward. I got literally, I was this exact same thing. She said, and she said, well, now you got two. I said, all right. So, and naturally, this is not on display in my collection, because that's, you know, I just went out and brought this instead. There's the Blu-ray. Yeah. Anyway, so I bring that up because Halloween 3 might have got me collecting, but it always started with this. And I, I guess this. My first two DVDs I ever had. And what I'm watching now is actually the Blu-ray. And I've since sold the Rob Zombie's Halloween, but I have the Blu-ray. Because I don't need two of those. Why? Why would I need two of those? Why would anybody need two of those? So this is the one that I remember. Like, being super excited about, okay? And I know what you're thinking. Uh, I'll be blind to Toilet Floss new because, well, okay, I was. Like, a young me enjoyed <laughs> Buster Rhymes in this, and I'm so sick. I mean, because nobody had called out Michael. He literally said, Michael, come see me. Like, I've never seen that before. No one's ever done that. He said in the uh, previous one, Jamie Lee Curtis called him out. But she didn't say, come see me, Michael, and start talking shit like, like Buster Rhymes did. And Dr. Lewis at the end of five. But again, he wasn't talking shit like Buster Rhymes. And young me enjoyed that. But well, like a very brief moment. And it got all quick because he wasn't just talking shit to Michael about the movie. He was making a fool out of Michael in all the worst ways. You know? So dressing up as Michael and cussing out Michael to his face, poking him, and then Michael didn't come, that would have been funny. But he didn't come, he just walked away. Not that anyone is fighting Michael Myers, which a young me used to get a kick out of seeing Buster Rhymes fight Michael Myers. I don't know. And he... He's just fighting Michael Myers and cracking jokes and the trick-or-treat motherfucker, I don't... A young me got a kick out of that too. I don't. But at the very end, which cracking KFC jokes, I didn't like them then. I don't like them now. Okay. And no, I don't like the whole trick or treat motherfucker, the cracking jokes. No. Like I've grown and learned. That is very bad. And you know that's kind of what they were going for, like. Mustafa Akkad asked his son, Malik Akkad, whose name you might know throughout the series, 
He asked him, who's the hottest rapper right now? And he said, Buster Rhymes. You would have asked me. I would have said the same thing that summer. Literally that summer. Like, yeah, he was huge. I had that album. What was his album at that time? Genesis? Yeah. If you would have asked me, I would have said the exact same thing. But it was literally that summer when my parents finally caved and reluctantly let me listen to Tupac. And then my answer was forever changed. So, but naturally Tupac couldn't appear in this. But yeah, I get it. But it was a cash grab. Okay, if you have this Blu-ray right here, and you watch the, some of the featurettes, you'll see him talking about how it was a simple cash grab at the success of H2O. Right down to casting a rapper in a row. Only LL, LL Cool J was a whole lot better. One of the best part of the movie, but he was way better than Buster Rhymes. I like Buster Rhymes as an actor and a rapper. He's been in good stuff, like Finding Forrester and other good stuff. But this, uh... Like, this is so not what anybody wanted to see. And they, they, they literally put everything that was out the time that was good. Blair Witch did good. Let's add found footage to it, huh? You know, Paranormal soldiers starting to catch traction. Let's have them investigate Michael Myers' house. Why? That's almost as dumb as the Strodes living in the Michael Myers' house. Speaking of the Strodes, let's talk about Lori. Uh, even back then, I hated the way her death was handled because like tomorrow she'll be back again but yeah as of right now Lori Strode was killed off again and the way they do it like I don't completely hate the opening like when he kills the two guards I actually wrote a very similar kill for a story I was working on around that time only it wasn't two guards it was a, a little girl anyway so the, like that part I, I like but when he got to Lori I also like the super fan, you know? He's just stating our trivia and the mask he's wearing. It's a nod to uh, past movies, which they do a lot of that in here, but it falls flat. But yeah, when he got to Lori, and at first, it starts all fine, you know? She tricked him. She's not in the bed like she's supposed to be. She wasn't taking the sleeping pills or the medications. It's just very funny. She started fighting him. And then you get to the roof scene, and. She thinks she, she has him. Like, she has him upside down. She was ready for him. He's upside down. She has him. And she goes, I just have to make sure. He was just trying to kill you. That's Michael. That, that was her mistake. He grabs her. He stabs her. She kisses him. Says, see you in hell. Falls to her death. So disrespectful. So many levels. Even more so than Jamie Lloyd and the previous ones. And I'll get to Daniel Harrison in Halloween. Probably Robbie's Halloween here in a second. I'm not watch that one. But, uh, my goodness. Uh, I, I hate that so much back then. Plus, I chased you for 20 years and that just... No, if I, if I have chased you for 20 years, you're not going to be able to identify you, okay? I'm not going to stab you and walk up. No. We're going to do it. Do it right. I know by this time she was beyond done with the series. You know, that's why she was finally killed off, but... Uh, it was handled the wrong way. And speaking of handled you know, the wrong way, disrespectful, Sean Patrick Thomas is in this. Good actor, I like him. Why did he get the special appearance credit? Why not Jamie Lee Curtis, huh? Why him? Let's talk about this cast. Uh, Sean Patrick Thomas, Jamie Lee Curtis for like a half a second. See if I can get her name right. All these years, Bianca could. Bianca. Could. 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 You know, Bianca is credit from from Rock Me Baby if you used to watch that or Rules of Engagement. She's in this. Katie Sackoff, who's wasted in this. She is the hands down best part of this movie. Every scene she's in, I love it. I cannot say that for any other character. There's a guy who I don't know if this was on purpose, but there's a guy who looks like Hyde from that seventy show in this. And he's chasing a redhead named Donna. And I know why he got fired from the ranch. I'm not even gonna... But... I mean... Is it what they, what they, they wanted to, did they want to get him to be in this? And he said no, because he had already been in, in a, a 
horror movie franchise in Dracula 2000, which was better than this. Well, yeah, and I was liking Donna, right? Because she was giving him the finger, telling him to piss off, you know. A strong woman. I like strong women. And it was fun up until I started having sex. Like, what? she been turning him down the whole time, and all of a sudden, fine. In this old house, I don't know. And after that, she became just the worst. It, like, her acting failed. The character just became just another dumb character. And she just killed the way she is killed. And the sex scene, I don't like it. It's nothing on the girl. She's beautiful. It's it's awkward, man. Like, I don't know. This, this, this franchise, this is far from the first sex scene this franchise and very far from the last. But this one, I just don't, I never like it. I like it then, I don't like it now. I don't know. And as I said, there are plenty of nods to past movies. But Sam Patrick Thomas is killed. That's a nod to the first movie. When uh, Michael kills a dude and does the head tilt. He kills Sam Patrick Thomas in the same way. And does the head tilt. There's plenty of that. And it's directed by Rick Rosenthal. So and he directed Halloween 2. And he even borrowed from himself. Like, there's a scene where the hero girl, Bianca, Slips in a puddle of blood. Just like in Halloween 2, where Lori's love interest slips in a pile of blood, only it was stupid in Halloween 2. And the TV version made more sense. Still stupid, but it made more sense. And this, I don't even. Like, she saw the blood and still slipped in it. I don't know. Speaking of that scene, that looked like it would have been the best scene in the movie. Tyra Banks does. Tyra Banks is in this. But it's off screen. She's like hanging in and all cut up with blood. Like, what happened? Like, it's in like Joseph Gordon Levin, the previous one, where I like the skates in his face. I'm like, how'd that happen? I'm always intrigued when I see it. This one's like, give me something, man. That could have been the best kill. Like, it's not much going to this movie, you know? Ugh. Take my nose for a long forever. So, it's supposed to be. A direct sequel to H2O, and as I mentioned in that one, it makes you look at that ending a little bit differently because, my goodness, that they pulled this one, like I said, just right out of their ass. They so we think Laura's decapitated Michael in H2O. No, he's unmasking this one, and it was some dude Michael had found, crushed his larynx, pulled a 47 again. And walked away wearing a medic suit with his knife that wouldn't be suspicious on all those emergency officials. And left this other dude to be killed. Who, by the way, actually has a scene before he's unmasked. And you see that it's none other than Tommy Lee Wallace. Who actually played Michael in the first movie in the closet scene. Which they redo in this. And it is dumb. So dumb. He went from playing Michael in the first movie in that closet scene to directing 3 and being the annoying voice guy in the Silver Samrock song to this. To be whatever whatever this was. I guess technically that means he's the second person to, to reprise the role of Michael, technically, and not Tyler Mayne. Technically. It was so dumb. And as I said, it is a doozy. That cameo. That's his worst cameo of all of them. That's him a lot. Because that's Silver Samrock song. Ugh. But yeah. I mean, there are moments in this movie, like Buster Rhymes, it's supposed to be a comic relief. Mm. I'll admit, there's like one funny scene where they're uh, talking to Deckard, who's Ryan Merriman, of all people. Cool. Always cool seeing him. And they're talking to Decker, and he's like, they think they killed Michael, they hung him. And then he's like, he texts him, he's alive. They look at the phone, and both Buster Rhymes and uh, Bianca turn around, they look at each other. They turn around, and Michael just standing there like, so, and he stabs Buster Rhymes. That was funny. That was funny. Think of Buster Rhymes, he was on SmackDown uh, advertising this movie, and surprisingly, he can cut a promo pretty good. Big surprise. But he, he said that that he survives the movie. I guess he didn't lie. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah. 
And the kills in this are, like, one of them is from Peeping Tom. The tripod kill is from Peeping Tom. I mean, that's just, like, where my favorite kills on here, and they brought it from the true original slasher film, not Psycho. Psycho was released, like, a, a month later or something. So, yeah. My least favorite kill is the fake David Hyde, the fake Hyde character, who Michael, he crushes his head till you see the blood come out, and that's it. Like, he did it better in part five. I mean, part of it, in my review, where he crushed the dude's head, and he's all, like, moving, like, moving around. But I guess this is undone. He's not superhuman. I guess. So basically, the story here is Michael finally kills Lori. He goes home, but oh no, a bunch of people are in there filming a reality show. That's another thing they they, they put in this reality TV because that had become huge in the early 2000s. So yeah, Michael comes home after finally killing Lori. People are in this house filming a reality TV series, and so he kills them all. That's basically the plot here. Dangertainment. I don't think I liked that even back then. Like, Really? I don't know. All this said, though, uh, this does kind of have a small, small spot in my heart because of you know, what it's done for my collection and, you know. But, yeah, I'm not blind to the flaws. Like, yeah, okay, there's one scene people like talk about where you can totally see the ceiling to the sound stage. That's, that's fine. Like, in the first one, there's plenty of stuff like that. The pine tree, the crew members. John Carpenter smoking a cigarette in the bus. Like, it's probably charm the first movie. And this one, just kind of happens. That's a minor, minor flaw compared to the other stuff. And this one, unfortunately, was the very last one that that family... At least, most of that family came back for it. Jamie Lee Curtis, in some way, Deborah Hill, Mustafa Akai. Still no John Carpenter, but a lot of people, Tom Lee Wallace, that family worked on it together. This will be the last one because a few years later, we would lose both Deborah Hill and Mustafa Akai the same year. Deborah Hill was at the beginning of 05, Mustafa Akai towards the end. Deborah Hill succumbed to breast cancer, I believe it was, and Mustafa Akai. He, he died in a car bomb with his daughter. So, this was the last one they did. There was supposed to be a sequel, apparently. Like The Mask, there was supposed to be a sequel and they had a contest. If you want to be in it, just like The Mask, whoever won that, got fucked. Because there's no sequel here. So, whoever won that, got fucked again. Unless they appeared in the remake. Which, you know, unless the other person appeared inside The Mask, which, you, you poor, poor soul. But yeah, this is pretty much the end of the Carpenter era. Now, the end of all that. Now we're going to the Rob Zombie era. Mm. 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 I get my grade. Oh yeah, okay, so this is the first entry not le not released in or around October. It was released in June. Let me look it up real quick. Real quick. <coughs> Yeah, oh, July, at least July 12, 2002. But that's the ways before October. Yeah, like, before this, Part 6 came out September 29th. At least that's right there, like, close to October. There's no way in July. It was supposed to be like a summer blockbuster. Now we got all these catchphrases and horrible catchphrases. Horrible catchphrases and stuff. Like, but. I don't know, like, who, why are you going to release a Halloween movie or after the 4th of July? It's not already a 4th of July slasher movie. Which I haven't seen it yet, but I, I definitely want to. It's like, releasing, it's like releasing April Fool's Day 
on Friday the 13th, or Friday the 13th on fucking, fuck, fucking, 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 fucking Halloween, uh, yeah, ridiculous. Well, that said, young me is not blinding me to this movie. It is not my least favorite in the Carpenter era. It's very close, though. And I will give it the... Uh, young me wants to give it a C minus... Uh, how about a D? Yeah. Give it a D. The way they treated Michael in this is walk around, Puh, okay. Keep making fun of me. Uh, also, again, you see Michael's eyes in this, which I don't like, but Rob Zombie, he at least fixes that in his movies. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll get to Rob Zombie in a second. That's all. Oh yeah, uh, Michael's mask in this, it's fine. I like it. It gets the job done. Just wish I didn't see his eyes. It's not the worst mask in the franchise. And it's obviously not the best. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the infamous, uh, Buster Rhymes. Karate chops Michael Myers and karate kicks him and just martial arts stuff. That scene was foreshadowed, if you can believe it. In the scene where he's in his apartment watching a Bruce Lee clone movie and Bianca visits him and you see Buster Rhymes' ass crack. They planned for that scene. 